my name is Susan Browning Babcock. I am 94 years old, and I was born August 19, 1928. Uh, I grew up in Perryville, uh, in South Kingstown, when I was young. My father had, first of all, uh, my father had a garage on Post Road in Perryville. But we had a, uh, and it was a small house beside the garage. And then we lived in the wintertime um, down, uh, well, it was, uh, Route 1 now is in a different place. So it was in Perryville, but you had to go down a long laneway to get to it. And um, it was a big house that we lived in in the winter time. So, um, oh, the house, the, the big one in the winter time, we slept upstairs. And um, it, it was a beautiful house with a big stone porch. It looked, you could see the ocean, you could see the boats out there, the tugboats and the barges and the Black Island. And you could see Black Island light flashing at night. And um, Dad had a barn there, and he had a cow, a cow in the barn, and he used to milk the barn, milk the cows. And my sister and I used to go down with him, and um, there was hay, and we used. I remember we used to slide down the hay and stuff. And once in a while, when he was milking, we'd go up, and he would squirt the milk into our mouths while he was milking the cow. I remember that. <laughs> And also, my sister and I, we were afraid to go to bed at night, and Dad would stay and lay on the bed with us until we fell asleep. And uh, I remember, you know, him trying to sneak out, out of bed, and we'd make sure we'd, yeah, 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 don't go, Dad. <laughs> so, and I also remember him shucking oysters in the basement, and both my sister and I were little. I mean, we couldn't have been three and four. I mean, we were only uh, 16 months apart. And, um, and I'd say, Daddy, I want that big soaker. And he would put this raw oyster right in my mouth. And then my sister, she would want one too. So we loved they, that. That was, I remember that. Makes me hungry already. Yes, we had lots of seafood, lots of fresh pork, lots of fresh beef, lots of um, sea clams and quahogs and things like that. I remember once when um, Pot of Pond froze over, Dad, we all went down on the ice and Dad cut a hole in the ice and got quahogs. You know, we had some kind of uh, tongs or something that he could get and in the winter time I remember that and I also remember after storms they would go down to um, the breakwater wall along there on the sand and we would pick up my mother would get um, enough sea clams and she used to can the sea clams and they used to get crabs and lobsters that washed up in the, in the high tides and got stuck on the sand. I remember that. I don't know, I remember several uh, favorite. Dad had a cranberry bog, I remember that. And we would go pick the cranberries and it was kind of, I remember it had kind of like little islands that you could get up on a mound that wasn't soggy with the, the wetness of the cranberry and, and um, I remember picking cranberries. Also, I remember near that bog, there was a sort of a laneway and there was winter green berries and they were red berries. And we would, my sister and I would pick those berries and eat those. Another thing, dad and mom used to take us looking for Indian arrows. And so we got a pretty big collection of Indian arrows. 
What did you do with the Indian arrows? My mother had a, like a, some velvet on a board and she had kind of like wires and wired them to it somehow. I still have um, one of those cards of Indian arrows. And other Indian arrows, we had, and we had little, what do you call them? They were like a stone, but they had a groove around it, like it was a, maybe a hatchet kind of a thing. Mm. No. When we used to go swimming two places. One was Word and Spawn. We'd go on Saturday night because we actually it was kind of like a bath. And um, there was a bush that grew, and it was called Poor Man's Soap. And you could take it and lather it like it made soaps, and so we'd scrub our hair. But the only thing we had stems and stuff in our hair from, I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember going swimming at Truston Pond um, and riding on my father's back. That, that's kind of scary when I think about it, you know? But, you know, we, all, we always had the ocean there, too. I was, we were close, you know, always close to the ocean. I can't imagine what it's going to be like in the future. I, I think I lived in the good old days. You know, it's, um, it's noisier. Where I live in Green Hill, it's very quiet. But then I'm deaf, so it would be, a, it would be very quiet anywhere I would. <laughs> I was thinking when I was sitting at the table out there, and everybody was kind of deaf. And it's like when I was a kid, my grandmother had a, chick, a big chicken house with a lot of chickens. And it right, reminded me of when I used to go in the chicken house with my grandmother, and it was like, you know, all these noises that you didn't have any, uh, you know, you didn't know what the chickens are talking about, <laughs> so what anybody at the table was talking about. <laughs> I feel for you a great sense of humor. Seems yeah, I remember how scared I was when I was a child when the Charles Lindbergh kidnapping took place, and it um, gives me goosebumps to even talk about it. But I remember I didn't even, I was afraid to be anywhere, and uh, um, I remember how frightened I was. I, I, I don't know how old I am. I don't exactly remember, but maybe I was four or five years old. But I do remember that. I remember, I remember the war, you know. And of course, I was 10 years old in the 38 hurricane, and I was at Matuing School when that happened. We had a ride home on the bus. Another thing was riding on the bus with the same bus driver from the time I was in the first grade until I was graduated from high school. Same bus driver. That is amazing. So I kind of wrote a story about that. I write things on my documents on the computer about different things. Well, we, we had we got on the bus. I remember looking out the window when we joined the school and seeing the cedar tree bend right over and the top hit the ground. So this is like what three o'clock in the afternoon. It was just getting to us, and then we got on the bus and we got home fine. And we were up at the garage because it was September twenty first, and um, and Dad had gas pumps. And all during the storm, somebody would come knocking at the door, and Dad did not have electric pumps. You, you had a crank that you got the gas out of the pump. And the name of the gasoline was Sinclair. I remember that, it had a big sign up in you know, the top of the tanks, said Sinclair. But Dad would just hand them the crank to go Pump it yourself. He wasn't going to go out in that 100 mile an hour wind to do that. And I remember us uh, looking out, and I remember my father saying, You kids come and look out this window and remember exactly what you're seeing. 
because they're never going to see it again as long as you live. He said, you are seeing the stones blowing off the stone wall. So oh, that was during the hurricane. And the roof went, he had a barn and he had cow and pigs in the barn. And the roof blew off the barn and the pigs went flying across the garden. And they, they ended up going all over Perryville, eating everybody's peaches and apples and fruit that fell off the trees and getting in the gardens and eating all of their pumpkins and everything. <laughs> I remember that. And, but then the next day, I remember Dad going, taking us to Green Hill, and there wasn't, all it was was sand and telephone poles that were bent over. No houses, now there were houses all the way from Green Hill to Watch Hill, and there were 400 people that died that day in that storm right there. So, and uh, Dad went to pick up bodies at Green Hill, and most of them were found way up on, um, near where, um, uh, what is that road? It's before you drive up to get on top of the hill at Green Hill. There were no houses. Yeah, Green Hill Beach Road? Yeah, Green Hill Beach Road. Maple Maple Drive? Mm -hmm. Maple Drive, I think. That's where Bernard Poppy lived. Mm -hmm. the, <clears throat> over the wall is Twin Peninsula, around Green Hill Pond. Mm -hmm. And that's where they found, the, they found like a dr truck full, because Dad, you know, were they were putting the bodies in the back of a truck. And uh, I remember um, one of my friends, later on, I met her, Gladys McIntosh, his sister died with a bunch of women that were at Green Hill having lunch. And um, they took them to the Charlestown Fire Department and people that went there to identify, and she went and identified her sister by her shoes that she had on with these bodies in the back of the truck. I remember that. Very sad. You know, uh, I remember our bus driver. He had two guys left on the bus, and they lived at Green Hill Beach. And there was Walter Holbert, and, and it was Al LaRose. And, um, so when Mr. Maine got there, they wanted to get off at the bottom of the hill by Maple Drive and go up on Green Hill and get to the houses. And, um, and Mr. Maine said, no, he didn't think that was a good idea. And they said, Mr. Maine, we know, we know how to do it. And, and you know, we, we live high, and that's high. The ocean's not going to get up there. And, um, but the water had got that far up, up Green Hill Beach Road. And um, anyway, he let them out and they went home and they were safe. But Mr. Maine, he, he couldn't go to bed or he couldn't even think. He got right back and got in his truck, whatever, and went back and walked up the same way they did up the hill and found them each at their own house. And so he was happy that they were safe and then he could be safe. So th that was pretty um, dramatic. That was pretty brave that he did yeah. that to follow through. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Sue. Thank you.